I forget if I mentioned this the first time or not, but the primary encouraging factor outside of just seeing more neat dialogue and encounters for doing the side, <coughs> the side quest is you only get 40% of uh, the reward, rewards for main quest as opposed to side quest. Hmm. That would do it. I would just to say your strengths. This is the area that if we kept the video on full range would have fucked up uh, the capture or something fierce. Even just Probably. Even just being in this area would have fucked it with how intense the white light can get in certain spots. Because you're in a lot of reflective gray areas. Yeah, this could, that would probably, also there's the saturation of like the reds and the blues would probably have done it too, yeah. Yep. Oh no, this is, this is also area, an area from the previous game. This is the area where we were, uh, we're making uh, ride-in jokes because it looks like the tanker. Oh yeah, right. But we managed to avoid drowning. Good work, Raiden. I'm in a perpetual state of barely avoiding drowning. <laughs> no, but this does actually do it do this does look like it takes a lot of inspiration for design from Metal Gear Solid 2 with the uh, the actual tanker area. You will see more so in a minute once we get outside. Oh, I don't doubt it. <laughs> also, the techno playing. Oh fuck! There is techno playing. Oh my god. I'm so not used to that right now with all with the the usual sweeping symphonies we've been uh, getting throughout this whole game. Yeah, the tra uh, the traditional Japanese music you normally hear. The, no, nothing quite. Uh, my my absolute favorite gender is when you go a whole sequence of a game go with n the same kind of song, then you get to the to a certain section. It's a completely different genre. Oh no! Fighting I fighting Jack in Final Fantasy X, and all of a sudden heavy metal pumps out of nowhere for a fucking Final Fantasy game, no less. They start playing uh, Ramstein. Uh, not quite Ramstein. Was it not? No, it wasn't. Who was it that did uh, the the Jack theme? No, I don't know. It's, it was just some random band, I think, that, that did Otherworld. Oh. I thought I heard it was them. I thought it was. You probably heard it from me. I thought it was, too, because I heard I saw one credit for them one time uh, that said it was them, but it actually was not. Ah. I didn't go on to listen to a lot of other Ramstein songs. Never them. Probably because they actually use English lyrics in other world, and it's just kind of weird. By the way, I figured out the perfect trade-off. You yeah. might have uh, heard me to you specifically mentioning music for a certain something a lot lately. Do you remember what that was? Uh, remind me. The trade-off will be, I give you all the I give you all the Toho music ever. You give me all the Tekken music. Oh, oh yeah. Right, because uh, I was showing you a little bit of Tekken 6 yesterday, and you were actually kind of impressed by the music in it, right? And there was something else last week or a couple of weeks ago where you had some Tekken music playing, and it was really good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tekken 5 DR. Um, uh, it was a night version of, uh, oh, like, a ceiling stage from uh, Tekken, uh, or original Tekken, Tekken 5. Yeah, now it's start looking, uh, starting to look like Sons of Liberty. Oh, yeah, dude. If I mean, I think there were actually more hexagons in Sons of Liberty, but this is definitely very reminiscent of that fact. Are these? Oh no, these are octagons. I think. Yeah. One, two. Okay, inside three, it's hexagons, but four, outside it's an octagon. Five, six, seven. Okay, yeah, no, it's an octagon. Turning circle, square, triangles into fucking squares. And also, a lot of the times, not knowing which way you're supposed to be going offhand, <laughs> and running into a lot of dead ends. Going up that series of platforms looked like it should have gave you like something as a reward. But you generally want to explore every which direction. Yeah. Because you always want to be destroying stuff to get your XP up. <laughs> Having gone through a good amount of Delmy Cry again recently, um, yeah, th that's definitely burns into my fucking DNA right now. With making sure to explore everything. <sighs> Sounds like something in the distance moved. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the platform opened from strut A to strut B. <laughs> my my uh, inner Elden Ring player is uh, tingling with ha with the pop pop up somewhere a heavy door opened. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, I won't say copy paste dungeons in the game, but a lot of like fairly uninspired dungeons in the game that has that exact same motif. Heavy large door at the front of it. Uh, however, you gotta go find a lever, and the lever will open this massive door, and that massive door leads to the boss of the dungeon. Cool, I guess. So where do we do the sniper duel with uh Vamp? There uh There there no, I can't find the my the bisexual uh nail machine augmented dude. No, fuck. 
as well as something rather about super heavy water that you can't swim and it just makes you sink. I don't know. The one where you have to shoot him with the sniper rifle while he's holding uh, oh, Emma. Yeah, right. Um, th these guys are holding katanas. Holy shit, I just noticed that. Uh, uh, boy, that, that has to be outside and it has to... We, well, we don't have a sniper rifle yet. <laughs> Although, also with Bristol, we might basically get one. We're, bas we're basically holding Fortune's rail cannon at all times. Yeah, basically. At, at certain points, Marissa's spells are basically the, the rail gun for, that Metal Gear Rex has, yeah. Yeah. How about that collection? I'm fucking stoked, hell yeah. We, it, the version ah, of Metal Gear Solid it. 1 will definitely not be Twin Snakes, but it, it's fine. I've just come to accept that you will only be able to experience Twin Snakes through piracy. Yeah. The unfortunate thing I've heard a lot of people talking about it in retrospect is the controls for it are really bad because these limited buttons on the GameCube controller really do not work for how that game is supposed to play. So it has to do with the fact that uh, Metal Gear Solid 1 was designed without the first person viewer uh, for shooting in mind. Y using that actually completely obliterates the uh, Ocelot by the beginning of the, of the game because you're not meant to be able to actually like snipe him from behind his uh, cover. Well, no, it's that, but it's also controls don't function the same way because like doing a codec call in any of the other games is just hitting select here it's hitting like a and start because you don't have a select button i never heard that criticism before but i could definitely see how that wouldn't translate fully well it's, i i've played a number of uh ps2 ports to the gamecube and it can sometimes be a little bit weird uh for me the first one that comes to mind is soul caliber 2 actually Hmm. Soul Calibur 2, uh, the GameCube version, generally handles the controls fine, but it can be a little bit iffy in some areas. It like, is incredibly weird playing that game the first time. Oh yeah, uh, the, the minuscule Y button on the GameCube controller being used for your B attack, they hit your vertical slashes, it can be a little bit weird. Ugh. That being said, the control handles fucking 3D movement totally fine. More so in the fact that... um. The control, the control stick has no notches, so it's very easy to get accurate A-way movement. Yeah. I mean, that looks never an issue, but it just makes it easier to do. But also not having access to all of your full buttons, or it being in a weird uh, pattern as opposed to the typical diamond of yeah. every other controller. I'll, I'll, yeah, that could be a little bit weird. I mean, I'm used to that kind of control scheme, but it's also weird trying to map that for Zola Calibur. Also, that on our buttons, um, Having to fully depress them to reach that click in order for to reach to use basic hotkeys is kind of weird. Well, yeah, also not having four hotkey buttons. Yeah, that now. Well, you're only missing one. The Z button is still there, but you're missing an L1 button. Also, having uh, Soul Calibur's fucked up no notation of A, B, K, G on the GameCube controller. Yeah, that, that that's like, where do you, where exactly, what button do you have dedicated to the A button, which you Since think. We have an actual A button on this controller. A, a big old one at that. I mean, at that point, it's like, do I continue to make this the guard button or do I make this something else? I can't really decide. It's a little bit weird, but not terrible to get used to. What was your guard button on that controller? Uh, I think I said the B. I think I made the A button. Um, probably one of the kicks. No, uh, no, I think I made the horizontal move. I think, yeah, I did that. I already, yeah, no, I came this way. Oh, I keep forgetting. Right, there's no master overhead camera for this for, uh, map for this game. Right. Oh yeah, overhead view. Yeah, no, we're definitely in. Oh uh, my god, that glowing, Jesus. Yeah, this is what would have killed it. Yeah, god damn it, it really would have. Beautiful though, but Jesus, the fucking sheen of everything in this game. Yeah, all of those incredible br uh, bright flashing lights. Yeah. Have I gotten anything new? I guess that certainly explains why Devil May Cry One last night didn't give me any disconnection issues whatsoever because it's fairly demure, demure um, color spread. Actually. We go back to your weapons, there was like a couple that gave like only minus one to some stats, but make the rest green. Uh, actually, this techno music kind of reminds me of some of the Ghost and Shell games I played. <laughs> it's actually kind of nice. Damn. Yeah. yeah, if you go back up to this, I think one of them was like only minus... Yeah, uh, down two. I think that's not a bad trade-off. Alright. Yeah, there's just no realistic way to become as powerful as you could in the first game. That's unfortunate. I think it's for the better, so that way it doesn't it's not as overwhelmingly simple to play through the game. And you actually do have to focus and get a little creative with how you go about it. But you're not getting oh, 
overwhelmingly powerful until the end game anyway, so it's sort of a moot point. Yeah. What I do wish, however, was the, the goofy uh, a dive dashing you're able to do in the first game. That, that was really cool. <laughs> so that was actually based on one of her attacks. It wasn't actually part of your dash, but that made it even better because it's like you can yeah. uh, mix your attacks with your mobility. You don't really have that in the same way here outside of just being on the wrong vertical axis. Yeah, no no diving attacks. That instantly recovers as soon as you hit the ground. So you can just kind of like pseudo wave dash with dive attack. That's also because in that game, your dash was on a different button, not your attack button. Right, yeah. Because your dash here is on, is on your primary attack button. And actually, as I'm just finding out, your attacks are completely locked out when you're dashing. Ah, ah Jesus. So yeah, no, your mobility here is just worse in every way. That's un... Fortunate to say the least. God damn, that's rough. I can only hope mods exist for this game that allow you to completely undo that, but yeah. You know. Ah, the can can be taken out, damn. No, it's completely indestructible. Yeah. You know, I never really thought about it. I don't actually Matt, know that there are any Toho games that you can just openly mod. I don't think so. Yeah. Um because a mod has to be specifically designed. Yes and no. You can fuck with I and I files, but I imagine you'll be able to go to like Gamer Nexus or something, be able to fucking find stuff through there. Probably not. Yeah. But in Gamer, when uh, Nexus mods isn't being weird with like fucking. <laughs> oh, no, you said Gamer Nexus. That's. Um, so, yeah, I said Gamer Nexus at the start. That was that was my bad. Yeah, that's the tech. That's the website that called Linus on his bullshit. Right. Uh, no, I was thinking about Nexus mods. Nexus mods were not being incredibly fucking weird with saying that Nami's proportions and One Piece, uh, fucking Odyssey, Odyssey are actually, uh, not good. And this is a true restoration of her actual proportions and says that, uh, cancel culture is what made her like this. this is, these are actual comments I read from Psychopath. That's on the mod pages? Yeah, there, there's a mod for, uh, Nami to make her bustier, I guess, in that game, which is weird because he's already thick as fuck but okay okay so i haven't looked at that game in extensive detail but i can't imagine they did anything like reduce her from like an l cup or whatever to uh to a d no i can't, not... I can't imagine the game would have done that <laughs> literally not even it's just like she looked but also if even if they did all the better the one piece women are freaks yeah seriously I, I'm, but no, like even just looking at the Odyssey model for her, I'm like, this is literally the best 3D model for Nami I've ever seen. What the fuck are you people talking about? I'm still partial to the later Pirate Warriors models. Oh, I'm not saying that's bad at all. I'm, just, but like for models we can actually see up close and like in detail, that was that's pretty pr probably the best. Hey, Pirate Warriors were the model the people were the models the people were using for uh, SFM porn uh, videos for a, for a few years there. Uh, to be absolutely fair, there wasn't a lot of other alternatives either. Unlimited World Red. Not a lot of good alternatives. See, this here is a secret. This is an Easter egg. This uh, chest didn't uh, fall out of the uh, out of the sky once you showed up there. It wouldn't have otherwise been there. Huh? Is it... We already have like, a billion of those, though. Black <laughs> I'm so... Pearl Band. I'm starting to think each of these named weapons or bits of armor oh, is no, actually... it's just worse. This okay? This might just be a sellable item. That's very funny. I'm starting to think that each of these named weapons and or armor might actually be more of like a tiered system for like the stats that actually give you. Probably. Instead of like uh, being individual things. And they just kind of like give you strict RNG like bumps. In terms of like the numbers that you actually do get. Yeah, there's not really anything set for what uh, what they give you and whether or not it'll be better or worse than what you already have. Yeah, it's like literally you capture a Pokemon in the wild and you don't fucking like just random IVs aside to their stats. Yep. Anyway, the cap is back in her lab as proper. She's Yay. she's not currently minding the store, so better hope that Marius is not uh not there robbing her for all she's worth. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Because remember Marius's primary character trait is that she's a thief. With her uh with her catchphrase being, I'm only borrowing this until I'm dead, then you can have it back. <laughs> uh yeah. Yep. Which is especially funny because one of her primary uh, areas of research is actually is actually a life extend ex extension potion. Not necessarily immortality, but something to just extend her lifespan past that of a normal human. Yeah. Mari, make preparations to make my way there. Oh, right. So, uh, okay, again, still... Uh, Nitori's shitting bricks because Raimi wants to go to the moon. 
Yeah, and they're like, that's not a good idea. Those people can fucking destroy you. Although, putting my name on a rocket, though, that'll be great for my resume. Right? Imagine being able to negotiate, not only go to the moon, but negotiate with the Lunarians. <laughs> I'll be the greatest engineer of all time. Uh, you'll w win prizes for both science and also uh, human stuff. Assuming Toho takes place in current year and not much time has actually passed since the very first ever game, since they don't seem, since Raymo as a human doesn't seem to age much. Yeah, it's probably still like 1999 or something. It's only been 30 years since, 25 years since the invention of the rocket. Yeah. You could probably be a big advancement in that field. I just hope that they're aware of uh, exit velocity and they might, might actually be able to get somewhere. I'm sorry, not 25, 35. A little bit off, not too bad. Moon landing was 64, I think. Uh, or was that like 68? It was def. I think it was 69. Nah. No, no, 67, 69. It's one of those two. Sorry. I oh no, we don't know exact things about uh, American achievements. I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna make this worse. There you go. I remember it relatively ba uh, based on Snake Eater because I saw some video where he said he wanted to get the moon landing involved in the plot of Snake Eater because, you know, that was still during the astronaut-cosmonaut wars. Yeah. Oh my god, I just noticed something else though. Hang on. Mm. If you look closely, uh, it looks like, also, uh, Nutori's art almost fully goes down to the bottom of the page. It's not cut off more so like Reimu's is. I think all of them probably are doing that. We just haven't been paying enough attention. Reimu's also kind of does that. Right under yeah, her, but right underneath her tie, you can see the splotch of, bl of the blue screen. No, I know. There. I think it might just be the stage or something. Probably. So now we're fighting the peel off robot. I suppose so. I was gonna say, I, I don't remember this robot from um, M Mega Man Legends. <laughs> you fought her uh, in the original game. I do not believe she was in this. I miss the, I think at the time we were calling it the Sahelanthropus that was the final boss of the original. Literally looked exactly like it. It was a very apt analogy. And she got beams. Okay. I think one of the things that she or her group is trying to do is create the Boruto uh, ninja wa uh, wristwatch things that can copy a jutsu. Which is to say, harness other people's yokai powers. I was, I was going to say, sorry, I don't remember reading any plot lines about uh, Boruto, so I just wanted to create wristwatches that can just copy jutsu out, right? That was literally the plot of the movie. Uh, it was a little, it was a little more nuanced than that. Like being able to shit out juice and not copy them. That, the, well, the verge is a little bit weird there. Well, no, it copies the jutsu and then it spits it back out. It has to, have, it has to have actually seen the jutsu to do it. It can't do it. No, what, what, what it did, what it was doing was it was like uh, shooting out like little tiny scrolls that actually had the jutsu like imprinted on them. I think you could just kind of like add them to your collection at will. Right, but it needs to have been performed at least once with, uh, with it to, uh, to use it though. Uh. Probably. I mean, I imagine someone was doing them and selling them en masse. Also, apparently that guy just comes back periodically throughout Boruto. He's not a one-off. He does. Uh, I was I was reading the manga for a bit. He does actually uh, make a return. <laughs> you may need to tape down, down that stand. Well, luckily, it seems to be the one of the easiest bosses you've found in the game so far, so I'm not complaining about that too much. Also, this chip tune boss music is adorable. Yeah. It'd be funny if it blew up and actually tried to take you with it. <laughs> Can you just scroll the text a minute? I want to actually get a play to this. Sure. No way, she's actually just going to give us the materials in order to fully create the rocket? Okay, cool. Well, we beat the shit out of her, and that's apparently the contract. Okay. Look for you to lift the travel summit is open while I catch a ride. Uh, alright, we are, we're going, we are sending the first rat to the moon, boys. 